Welcome to Rising Stars, where Miriam Knight, publisher of New Consciousness Review, interviews exciting new voices in the world of progressive and transformational books, films, and ideas who offer intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us as we celebrate the conscious awakening and explore many expressions of consciousness in action. This review to the Rising Star Show. I'm afraid that today's rising star has not yet risen. Um, we do not know uh, where he is, and I am hoping that he will get back to us. But in the meantime, that's kind of leaving me to swing gently in the breeze, um, waiting to see if anything happens. I'm trying to get a hold of the studio as well. And what we will do is try and catch up with our guest, perhaps at some other time, and record something for the archive. But I have to um, apologize for the moment because our, our guest was supposed to be uh, Yuval Rohn, who, who actually uh, promised to be a really fascinating guest. He's an internationally renowned world music artist and composer and peace activist, author. He's won a Grammy. Uh, no, he was nominated for a Grammy, but he won an Oscar for uh, his musical score for a wonderful movie, which if you haven't seen, it's called West Bank Story, which from memory was uh, basically a takeoff on the West Side, on West Side Story uh, set in the West Bank with a uh, romance between a pal beautiful Palestinian girl and a young Israeli soldier. And it was all about their uh, trying to bring their respective warring clans um, into some kind of understanding of their, their love for each other. This is such a, a poignant uh, scenario that we see played out again and again across the the millennia across the cultures, across the religions. And it all boils down to the ability of love to bridge the chasm between the, the cultural and religious and ethnic misunderstandings that divide us as people. We see this uh, coming up again and again in the current political discourse when uh, ethnic fears are being played upon by the, the politicians just for their own personal gain. And it, it kind of was the, the subject of my editorial, the editorial in the new issue of New Consciousness Review magazine that just came out on the first of the month, where I talk about the difference in mentality among, uh, actually it goes back to the financial services sector, um, which I was peripherally engaged in for, for a number of years, where a company is judged by its performance, not in the last year or the last five years, but only in its financial performance in the last quarter and what a trader's expectation is that it might do in the coming quarter. It's kind of like futures tradings where you make, where traders make money just on the difference between the buying and selling, you know, kind of um, buy low and sell high or sell, you know, uh, big quantities and make a few pennies on each one. But when you sell in large enough quantities, you actually can make a lot of money. And uh, <laughs> in fact, sorry for um, moving around like a, a grasshopper, but it brought to mind a uh, lawsuit, uh, not a lawsuit. Um, there was something about the telephone line between New York and Chicago that gave an edge to the New York traders of milliseconds 
and um, it was just a question of the the information coming in uh, at at a speed of a few milliseconds sooner that enabled the New York uh, traders to have a big edge. Anyway, getting back to the trader mentality, that is um, the way that people in the political scene have been uh, couching their discourse. It's all short-term gain. It's all the next uh, primary or, or the next caucus or the next soundbite on a, um, a TV show. Rather than actually giving the voter the benefit of the doubt for having some intelligence and really looking for integrity and value in the political discourse. Um, and in the corporate scene, this is looking for real value in a company, looking for what they do in the community, how they treat their workers, the quality of their products, the, the usefulness of their products to um, the, the consumer on, in the long term not just its kind of um, flashy attraction in the short term. I know I sound like an old person thinking about the good old days, and there was a lot of bad stuff in the good old days. But one of the things that we are losing in this technological age, in, in the short attention span that we have, is a focus on values, on the real values of, of our work, on the real values of how we come together um, in society, what we offer each other as, as uh, a community. Sometimes the only time these real values come to the fore is in times of crisis, when when a storm hits or when a fire breaks out, then people tend to come together and help each other. And it doesn't matter what your religion or skin color is. People really do have this inbuilt uh, instinct to help and, and, and someone in need. Sometimes that is overridden by fear by fear of the unknown, because we live nowadays in such insular societies. We live in our communities where we don't see people who are different from us, unless we happen to be at the edge of a community, uh, at the boundary between um, two, two groups. Or if we live sometimes in, in a high rise, in an urban environment, um, even there, people tend to to uh, be more like us than, than different. So how do we bridge this divide? How do we get over the, the gaps? One, one way is simply to get to know your neighbors. And if they're not your neighbors, simply to get out into different cultural environments. Um, there, there are a lot of initiatives that are built on interfaith uh, communication. And that's actually one of the things that our guest today um, has been brilliant at. He has used the power of music to create musical bridges around the world and to create peace tours uh, where he has a, a multi-faith ensemble of, of um uh, Sufi and, and Jewish and, and African American and, and Hindu um, musicians, each performing the songs of their traditions, the music of their traditions. And in fact, he has a, a book that's just come out called Music as a Path to Wisdom. Divine attunement, music is a path to wisdom. And I guess he's focusing really on the ways that people use music to connect to the divine. Um, 
in in one of the videos that I saw in preparation for this kind of non-show, um, uh, he had a, a whirling dervish, and there they they whirl around to music and uh, go into an altered state. We know how drumming is used in Native American traditions and in African traditions, uh, and and uh, really uh, indigenous traditions around the globe, to connect with the, the heartbeat of the universe. Um, in Native American drumming, um, the, the drums often connect to the human heartbeat and use that as a bridge to connect into the... Um, Mother, Mother Spirit, uh, Mother Earth, and beyond into all that is. And I guess in a sense, that's what this show is all about. It's about how do we connect from our little selves into our greater selves, into all that is, into all that we can become, all that we truly are. I'm on Skype. Hello, Miriam. Hello, Yuval. Miriam, I apologize. I got stuck in traffic in Los Angeles on the way to my studio and the roads were blocked. And I was on my cell phone, but I didn't know your number. I couldn't call you. I apologize. I just got into my studio right now. Well, better the, late than ever. And I, I've kind of given people a bit of an introduction to you. Okay. <laughs> so okay, yeah, I'm so glad that you have joined us. Um, I've been talking about how you use your music. Uh, I've been talking about your book, actually, about uh, divine attunement and music as a path to wisdom and how your ensemble um, expresses the different ways that different communities connect. Now, I hear our studio in the background, so I've actually been tap dancing for or 15 minutes so we have to take a break but then hallelujah we will be back with Yuval Ron and uh, talking about divine attunement and be right back very good free your mind expand your soul Om Times Radio IOM FM are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffey and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleash, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleash, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Our guest, Yuval Ron, and we were talking about his book, but his book is really just the uh, tip of the iceberg of everything that he does. As I uh, mentioned, he's a, a peace activist and an educator. He, he's lectured at Yale and Johns Hopkins and UCLA and MIT, and um, he has collaborated with neuroscientists to explore the connection between sound and the brain 
and his healing music is used in clinics and treatment centers. And uh, we were talking about his book, Divine Attunement, Music as a Path to Wisdom. And uh, Yuval, I wanted to ask you, I love the tagline of your book. Mm-hmm. How did you embark on that path, on music as a path to connecting people? Well, it started, uh, I think, when I was very young in Israel, when I was uh, in high school, I think uh, early days, I I played guitar uh, back then, and I noticed that whenever I, I would bring my guitar to a, a, a field trip or to a party, people would gather around me, and it would create a circle. People would leave their differences behind. You know, in high school, there's all kinds of social status and cliques and issues uh, for teenagers. Those are the the common dynamics everywhere. But I noticed in early in early age, I noticed that when I strummed the guitar and I played a song that everybody knew, everybody was singing, and people that were on the fringes were accepted. Uh, everybody were on the same footing, singing along. In Israel, they love to sing along. It's something about Israel that uh, is very big: sing alongs. Um, so th- that's how it started. I just sensed it intuitively. I didn't make a big uh, mental mark of it at the time. Uh, but then it went on to an experience I had with the Bedouins in the Sinai Desert when I was 17. I traveled with my guitar and friends from my hi- high school to the Sinai Desert. Uh, and we met the Bedouins, the nomads. And that's where I saw the oud, the, the, the ancient Middle Eastern lute that I play now. And I've been playing for more than 30 years but I, I saw the oud, and I saw the uh, Bedouins sitting around the fire at night playing the oud, and I brought my guitar, and I just tried to imitate what they were doing on the oud on my guitar. And again, a circle of people that were traveling in the desert suddenly uh, came and sat around the fire. There were tourists who were walking by foot in the desert, uh, uh, people from Scandinavia, from England, from the United States, from people from Jordan. Uh, people from Israel, and they were all coming to the fire and to the sound from very far distance because in the desert, there, there, were, there were no buildings, no roads, no factories, no electricity. So the sound in the desert, in such a desert, the sound travels for miles and miles. So people came from far mm-hmm. following the sound. And they came and sat around the fire. And in the morning, people came to me and said, oh, you're the guy who played around the fire last night. You're the guy. And everybody wanted to know me. Everybody know to, people wanted to socialize with me. People from different countries who I never met before. Some people who I couldn't even communicate with because they didn't know English or Hebrew or Arabic. But they were there. People from Germany or Sweden. And we befriended because of the music. So that was a very early experience that I had. And then I went to, uh, I came to Boston to study music for films. That's what I I specialized in, in composing music for films. And uh, that led me to Los Angeles to compose music for television and and films. And uh, I I, I put my instruments aside. I, I focused on being a composer for 15 years. And uh, since college, actually before college, back in Israel, when I was 19, I think, I I became interested in mystical teachings. First, it was Kabbalah, the Jewish mysticism. I started studying um, in Israel when I was 19. And then I came to Boston and I studied with a, a Chabad rabbi in Boston, Bat Kabbalah. And then uh, in college, I became interested in Buddhism and then Zen. And uh, so I, then later it led to Sufism. So I started exploring mi- wisdom traditions. And I found that they were all from the East. Uh, you know, Judaism and Buddhism and mm-hmm. Zen and, and Hinduism. It's, it's all, all from the East. It's all where I came from. I came to the to the United States from Israel, and so um, I, I explored mysticism and wisdom traditions in parallel to my musical exploration as a composer, and gradually I start combining the two. 
and um, in 2000, uh, I was inspired to create an ensemble of musicians from the Middle East, from different countries, Palestinians, Syrians, Turks, Armenians, uh, Israelis, and I brought them together to become what later became, became the Yuval Ron Ensemble. In the beginning, it was called just Yuval Ron and Friends. And basically, it was people that I met in Los Angeles in different parties, in just social gatherings. And we, we began playing music together. Again, just like in the desert, just like when I was a teenager in Israel, the same thing happened in Los Angeles, in parties, in backyards of houses of people. Uh, suddenly, there was a, a Persian drummer sitting next to me. Suddenly, there was a Palestinian singer singing next to me, a, a, a player a canoe player from Jordan, and we start just playing for fun in parties because my job, my day job, and my full my, my full <coughs> career was focused on composing. Are you still there, Miriam? Yep. Okay. Uh, so um, I looked around in, in, in the room one day in 2000, and I saw all these people from different countries of the Middle East who come from opposing camps, opposing nationalities, opposing religions, opposing ethnic backgrounds. And I saw that we sit together and we make, we create harmony together and we, we, we have perfect understanding beyond languages, beyond borders, and we have love to the harmony that we create. We all appreciated it. And I decided to take this out to the public, to put it on stage and to use it as a tool to educate people about the history, by the traditions of the Middle East, and to use that as a demonstration how we can create great beauty if we work together. So that is the message that I bring with my work. That's such a beautiful story. Um, and uh, I have <laughs> a great vested interest in seeing peace in the Middle East, um, as you know, and um, I'm wondering whether you saw um, rapprochement. Uh, w what effects did you see of your music in some of these um, really tense areas? Uh, th that's a great question that I'm being asked often by uh, reporters, and, and I, I can I can spend a few hours telling you all the anecdotes and all the stories and experiences that I, I created, uh, that I experienced and collected over the years. Um, I can tell you a few of them. Um, one is uh, the, a few years ago I was in residency in Yale University. I was an artist in residence in the Divinity School of Yale University. Me and my, my whole ensemble. And we gave master classes and we gave workshops and we gave a concert. After the concert, a young student came to me, a really skinny, pale-looking guy, and he told me, look, I am a voice major in Yale University, and, I, and I'm going to graduate next year. And I came to your concert, and I'm really inspired to do something with my music, but I have no idea what. I just know that I studied music in Yale, and I want to go out of Yale, and because of your concert, I want to do something good in the world with my music. Would you help me figure it out? That's what the student told me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, look, uh, here's my email. Here's my phone number. Let's keep in touch. I'll be happy to mentor you. I, I'll be happy to advise you. So this kid remained in touch with me. And he told me later that he has this intuition that he needs to go to Jerusalem that he needs to find what he will do with music in Jerusalem. And so uh, I helped him and guided him uh, to connect with musicians, Jewish musicians, Arabic musicians in Jerusalem, who I know. And he went there on a, uh, he got a, uh, a grant, a, uh, uh, a Fulbright. He received a Fulbright, Ful Fulbright grant to go to Jerusalem. And I remained, it, remained in touch with him. And then he came up with the concept. He came up with a vision that he will create a choir of Jews, Christians, and Muslims, 
children in Jerusalem, and he called it Jerusalem Youth Choir. The, this has never been done. Can you believe that? Nobody ever, nobody ever dared to even think and come with this vision because Jerusalem is so segregated because oh, no. the, the people are so, they, they experience the hate, they experience the anger. They are segregated physically, they're segregated mentally. And here is a young skinny kid from Connecticut coming with an idea. And he decided that he will go to all the high schools in Jerusalem and audition every child in Jerusalem, in all the schools, and find the best singers across that city from all the different neighborhoods and different religions and put them together. Can you believe this kid going to talk to the principals of all those schools in that city? It's a tough city. No, nobody, nobody wanted to talk to him. And you know what? I encouraged him to continue with his vision, and he made it. He created the Jerusalem Youth Choir. You can look on YouTube. Now they're giving concerts all over the world. They just finished last summer a tour of Japan. They're coming to sing in America. They, he connected families and kids from across the divide. And this all started with one concert that I gave in Yale University several years ago. Now, this is just one story, just one anecdote. I can sit and tell you 70 stories in the next 10 hours, and this is all because of the work that we do. Now, we cannot measure it scientifically. We, can, we may see the impact of that in the future, but I'm confident that the only thing one can do is to inspire good in the world, to inspire hope, and to inspire others to do the same. So, for me, the best, the best stories, the best examples are what happened to people who come to my concerts and yeah. workshops and what they do in the world that is beyond. Fantastic. Well, it's break time again, and we are speaking with Yuval Ron. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Own Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. We're speaking with you, Val Ron, the music artist, composer, peace activist. And I understand, Yuval, that you have just started a nonprofit foundation. Can you tell us about it? Yes, indeed. Um, 
the foundation is called Inspired Sound Initiative. And you can see it online, inspiredsoundinitiative.org. And the reason for starting this nonprofit organization is uh, a vision that I have uh, to, uh, to try to bring more of the work that I do with children to communities that would never get the work that I do. So Yale University can afford to bring 10 artists of my ensemble across the country for a residency. Uh, Sometimes universities like Yale and University of Chicago and many other universities, John Hopkins, UCLA, sometimes they gift an event to a community school. Sometimes they send me to do an outreach in an inner city school. Sometimes, and they're very kind to, to do that and pay for it. But most of the time, schools that lost the arts, that have no music and have no visiting artists, communities that are in poverty and radicalism, not just in America, but all over the world. I just came from India a week ago, and I was told in India that uh, the radicalism, Islamic radicalism in India, is now highest in the poorest neighborhoods <laughs> of Muslim communities in, in uh, Rajasthan and in India. And I was told that by leaders of the Muslim community. They are very concerned about that. And uh, I did a workshop in Rajasthan a week ago for children in that in these poor neighborhoods to bring them together and to teach them songs about sharing, about creating unity, about accepting other kids of other religions. That's the kind of work that needs to be done. And because the communities that need us the most don't have the resources, I decided to create a nonprofit organization that will raise the money from corporations and from foundations and from donors and sponsors and gift the work that I do to the schools and communities around the world that have no resources. So what, so the, the workshop that we just did in Rajasthan, in Ajmer, in that school that bring together Muslims, Hindu, Sikh, and Christian children together, uh, we went there and we gifted the workshop to the school. The school paid nothing not for the transportation or fees or, or any, any, any expenses. Everything was gifted by my foundation to that school. We want to do more of that around, the, around this, this country, around the States and around the world. We do this work, but we want to do more of it. And again, we want to train other artists. We want to train other musicians how to do this work. So we grow and we have other ambassadors and other organizations all around the world doing the same kind of work that we do, training children to become citizens who care about harmony, peace, and beauty and unity using music and dance. That's fascinating. It reminds me of uh, an interview I had with uh, some uh, hip-hop artists where hip-hop actually was used as an expression of uh, change in a culture, an expression of cultural identity um, in uh, opposition to the existing um, feelings of rejection and alienation. And what you're doing is similar in spirit in that you are creating with your music and dance a feeling of connectedness as opposed to alienation. Right, right. I'll, I'll give you an example of what we just did in India. So in that school, it's a unique school, they bring children from four different religions together, even though with, a, with great resistance from the families, but they, they, they lure the families in by giving free food and free tuition to the children. And the poor families, even though they don't want to go to that school, although it's a very good school, but they, they're afraid to go or they have superstitious 
uh, position to go to a school where Muslim kids and Christian kids and Buddhist uh, and Sikh and Hindu kids studying together, the families from a very poor background are bringing the children and learning uh, that they can create harmony together. But what was interesting is that uh, they gave a two hours presentation of the children singing and dancing and doing all kinds of skits and involved skits and dances from the different religions. And the way they do it is, is beautiful. They, they have, let's say, they had a fashion show. How Muslim girls in India dress. And then how Christian girls in India dress. And how Sikh and how uh, Hindu uh, ladies dress up. And it was a beautiful fashion show. So side by side showing the harmony together. And then they had songs from the different four religions that are coexist in that school. And that, that was wonderful. But then I went on stage and gave my presentation with my ensemble. And I taught them a song in English about giving love, about sharing light, about teaching peace and leading and having that led to harmony. And that was all fine. That was all within what they were used to. And then I, did, I took it a step further to a place that they normally don't do. I taught them a song that is an old Israeli song about love, which I recorded on my CD, Seeker of Truth. And we sing it as a prayer for peace. It's a song called Erev Shul Shoshanim, but we sing it as Shalom Salam. Mm -hmm. as a, a prayer for peace. And originally it was just for Israelis and Palestinians. But what I do, I, I did it with the word Shalom, Salam, Shanti, which means peace in Hindu, and Hallelujah, which especially, it's a Hebrew word that especially engaged the Christian kids. And so it's one song, one melody, using four different words, that are sacred words and core words for peace and faith for these four communities. And we got them to sing all together. And the one song brought the oneness, brought the, the, the variations together into one. And that's something that they are not used to do. They're used to position themselves side by side. You know, different song for the Christians, different songs from the Muslims, different songs for the Hindus. And they, they create tolerance by that. But I took it a f step further by having one song, same melody, same music, same notes, but using those different sacred words in one song. So increasing the oneness and the, the sense of oneness among those children. And you know what? The religious leaders who were there uh, and donors and sponsors of the school, it was, a, it was the, the Peace Day celebration in that school in Ajmer in Rajasthan, India. Uh, all the dignitaries took notice of that. They noticed that it was something beyond what they normally do. And they came to me after, and they were very deeply moved. And they asked me if I could come back and if I could go with them to Kashmir, the, the center of conflict between India and Pakistan is Kashmir. They wanted me to come back next year and to do a big event in Kashmir to try to lower the, the tensions and encourage the peace. So there was a fabulous reception. And this is in, in, in a very poor neighborhood. It used to be a slum. And now it's, uh, you know, with the efforts of, of many, many good people and charity organizations, it's not a slum. It's still a poor neighborhood, but it's not in dire straits, as it used to be. So uh, that is the kind of music that we do, the, the kind of work that we do, uh, using music to bring people together. I think that music has really proved itself to be a connector of across um, divides, and it's astonishing to me that not more people um, are doing this uh, mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, so I understand that you, from what you said earlier, that you're also 
training facilitators to be able to expand this work out into the world? That is one of the programs that we have uh, uh, created for the new foundation, the uh, Inspired Sound Initiative. One of, one of the programs that we are planning to do is once a year, we're going to start with once a year, uh, programs in Los Angeles where we would pay for people to fly and stay and be in Los Angeles for the training period. Uh, we're going to pick, handpick talented young artists who are willing to do something with their music and dance and train them on how we do it, how we program, how we do the business side, side of things, how, how we get a nonprofit organization together, how do we fundraise, how we, how we coordinate, how we manage, and how we educate. And uh, we are interested in people coming and, and uh, going out to the world with this training, so uh, we are not uh, the only one who's doing it. We are interested in duplicating ourselves many, many, many times. So, if someone is interested in uh, supporting this or getting involved in this some way, can they connect with you through InspiredSoundInitiative.org? Yes, yes. There's a page there for connecting with us. Uh, it's very simple. Yeah, just go to that website, learn more about it, and and please uh, contact us because uh, we have a great team of people from all over the country, lawyers, educators, bankers, mortgage uh, lenders, uh, so many people. It's really heartwarming that people responded to the call that I put out, and, and they're all uh, coming together to work to realize that vision. Mm. Again, it's uh, Inspired Sound Initiative, Dot org. Right. So I see that we just have a few seconds before our next break, but um, I think that this is so exciting to see. And, and Yuval, I just want to say how delighted I am that you're you're in this world doing this work. So we are speaking with Yuval Ron. He's the author of Divine Attunement. He is the spirit behind a nonprofit inspired sound initiative, and we will be right back with our final segment. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on OM Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Come on down. You're the next listener of the Joe Show's second annual salute to game shows, Price is Right, Uncensored. A two-part series airing on Wednesday, March 9th and Wednesday, March the 16th. We will take you back all the way to September 4th, 1972, the first day Price is Right aired on CBS the Joe Show speaks with longtime former producer Roger Dobkowitz, Million Dollar Spectacular announcer Randy West, and longtime former Price is Right legendary host Bob Barker. So mark down Wednesday, March 9th, and Wednesday, March 16th, 9 p.m. Eastern, Old Times Radio on The Joe Show. Being a 
radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. The Real Conscious Connection. OM Times Radio. IOM FM. To have is called Meta Mindfulness Music. And I was very interested in the uh, musical CDs that you had created with Dr. Gold. Tell us about them. Well, these are uh, music for healing, and uh, it's very interesting projects. That uh, I, it's a commission that I got from Dr. Gold, who's a pioneer healer. Uh, he's an expert in Chinese uh, medicine and medical Thai massage and um, some Ayurvedic medicine. So what he asked me to do is to create a set of musical CDs that would promote healing and well-being based on Chinese medicine. That's the first box set of seven CDs. And every acupuncturist and herbalist from the Chinese medicine field would understand immediately when they see that because it's, it's based on the elements. There's one CD on fire. There's one CD that invokes the power of fire. There's another one called wood, which is another element. There's element of water, earth, air, which is called metal in Chinese medicine, and so on and so forth. So there's seven different CDs. Each one promote and invoke a different element, which is within nature and within us. And there's a way to use it for different uh, remedies. People use it for uh, cures for insomnia, to elevate stress, uh, high blood pressure. Uh, it promotes uh, faster recovery from trauma, from surgery. Uh, from injuries, uh, and they use it in uh, rooms of uh, treatment for, uh, for example, chiropractors, uh, massage therapists, um, uh, Chinese medicine practitioners, and so on. Uh, the second project that I did with Dr. Gold for Meta Mindfulness Music, that's the company that handled that, uh, Music for Healing, uh, you can look it up, Meta with double T, metamindfulnessmusic.com. Uh, the second project that we did is based on Ayurvedic medicine, which is the ancient medicine of India, which is very, very complex, more complex than the Indian system, than the Chinese system. And uh, that system relates to yoga. So the principles of Ayurvedic medicine from India and the principles of yoga have some common uh, elements that comes from the ancient texts, the, the Vedas. And so the music that I created for that came out as a four box, four CD box set. Uh, and that is used for uh, mostly for meditation, mindfulness, and yoga. I'm curious, how did you come up with the the music for each different element. How were you inspired to it? Well, uh, I did a lot of research. Uh, you know, I just gave a lecture in, in Delhi uh, three weeks ago called The Healing Power of Sound to the Quantum Institute of India uh, about this question that you just asked me. It was a two hours lecture with a PowerPoint presentation where I, I showed them every layer that is in the music and why I use that layer, what is the philosophy. So it's a very, very long story. It's going to take me two hours to answer your <laughs> question. But I, I'm going to say very quickly is that I, 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 I did a two years research on the, the musical elements that the ancient Chinese used for healing. Uh, and I found quite a lot of information about musical tones that were used, musical instruments that were used. Uh, in addition, I use neuroscience and music therapy clinical trials uh, showing which musical modes, which musical scales, which musical instruments uh, 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 promote uh, relaxation and, and, and um, promote 
well-being in different uh, areas of health. Uh, and I used my background as a film composer, using music in films, uh, which is a it's a field called uh, psychoacoustics, which we use in film. Is how how can we manipulate the emotions of the audience using music in films? How, how do we make the audience to feel hopeful or to feel afraid or to feel that the plot is, that the story is not over, that the, the, the solution is not there yet? How do we tell, how do we manipulate the psychology of the audience with music? That is something that I studied and I use all the time as a film composer. So I use all these tools in order to create music that make people feel and think and, and have physical and mental positive impacts uh, relating to those elements of fire, water, earth, air, um, and something called triple warmer, which is another element in Chinese medicine. It's also an acupuncture um, nexus. Yes. Yes, exactly, yeah. Um, I went to your site and I was listening to some of the samples that you had of the different CDs. So uh, does one tend to be drawn by a, um, an element that is your prime element or by a complementary element, what you might need to balance? I'm sorry, the, the, the signal just broke down. Um, I missed the, the first half of the question. I was wondering if you need, um, if, if you're listening to the the different elements, if you would be drawn to the element that is identical to your primary element, or whether you would use the other elements to balance what you're lacking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, the way the music is being used is mostly to invoke the elements that you need. So, for example, if you suffer from um, a lot of dryness, you have dry tongue, you have a lot of heat in your body, uh, you've got all kinds of skin rashes because of that, you have all kinds of symptoms, basically because you have too much heat and you, you don't have coolness in your body. Uh, you eat a lot of spicy food, let's say you, you have a fiery temperament, you know, it's, it's mental and physical. Um, then uh, we would use water, the CD called water, to bring more calmness and bring more coolness uh, and calm the fire with the element of water, you see? Mm -hmm. So uh, the way, the way the, uh, it's called ancient wisdom and modern sound for well-being and health. That's the first CD set of the elements. That's how these works. The second box set, which is the Ayurvedic box set, which has four CDs. One is called Vata, the other one Pita, and the, the third one is Kapha, and the fourth one is Vital Harmony. These are different. These are not so much about invoking the elements that you need, but rather balancing your tendencies, so, for example, if you, if you are a vata type, which is um, somebody who's very much creative and their mind wanders all the time like the wind, and they're not very grounded, and they're very, very cre dreamy and creative and, and, and not, not pragmatic, and they, they work on a million projects and they never get anything done, they never produce anything completely, but they have wonderful ideas. That and they have a feeling that they they have this feeling that uh, the world moves too fast, that everything moves too fast, and they, they are very stressed by it, you know. And they can't they, they they want they want to shout, please stop the world! I want to get off, you know. That's the kind of a feeling. All those things are expressions of a vata type, which is off balance. Mm -hmm. You see, it's wonderful to be creative and a dreamer. We need that. But if you're off balance, that's not good. Then you need to listen to that CD called Vata because that CD, that music balances 
In one hand, it encourages the elements of Vata, the dreaminess, the airiness. It encourages it and complements it and, and, and acknowledges it. At the same time, the music provides warmth and groundedness and a little bit more uh, emotional, emotional warmth because the Vata type, are, they tend to be a little cold. It's like a cold air. They, they're not fully passionate, like really, they're not fiery. They're, they're creative and dreamy, but they're not fiery and passionate uh, they, because they, they, they're, they're moved by cold air. So the CD acknowledges their, the, the best of their characteristics and tries to balance and encourage the, the expression of it in right. the best way. Right. That's why those four, four CDs, the dosha sets, the healing sounds of the doshas, the Vata Pitta Kapha and Vital Harmony, those, that set is much more complex than the seven CD sets of the Chinese medicine that simply pr- pr- invoke the elements of fire or the elements of water or the elements of earth, etc., etc. Here in the doshas, uh, in the Ayurvedic medicine, we are doing two things at the same time. We are balancing an element and we complement it, we encourage it, we acknowledge it, and provide it what it needs as a balance. Well, Val, you are a man of many parts. <laughs> we, we have had the pleasure of speaking with you, Val Rohn. And I want to remind you about the website of his foundation, inspiredsoundinitiative.org. And if you want to learn more about these CDs, it's Meta Mindfulness Music. Dot com Meta with two T's. So, Yuval, thank you for finally being with us today. Thank you very much, Pia. Yeah. And, and uh, do join us next week. In the meantime, visit my website, ncreview.com. I'm Miriam Knight, wishing you many blessings and time. Goodbye.